Good to see you, True Blue International Star. How's it going? <laughs> Good to see you, Pooja. I'm doing very well. How are you? I am very well. So, up pehle, please define extrapolation and spell it. Extrapolation and spell it. Extrapolation, spell it, and now meaning. Batayiye ki bahut log soch rahenge ye kya? Extrapolation means their age can be determined by extrapolation from their growth rate. So basically, this extrapolation, the the show as we know, is a show that talks about the future, but a lot that's being spoken about in the show is actually what's happening right now. Absolutely. So I think it's a show that is very important. It's a conversation. that needs to be done on an immediate basis because a lot of what we've already done in the last 60 years courtesy the industrial revolution that's happened in the last 200 years is irreversible so ab jo bacha kucha hai at least wo hum uh, usko agar rok sake uske pace ko uh, you know there'll be more generations who'll be able to live in a relatively healthier and cleaner world unless we we'll just have mass crusaders in the future the dystopian future just might be ours very soon You hope unless every day looks like halloween <laughs> true that you know and that's what i mean what's been happening it seems to be all those films that were made in the 90s we are living all that literally you know? literally i mean even in the episode if you see like you know um, like gorav going and getting like a mask shot at a at a stall we are not too far away from it because there are oxygen um, oxygen shops in delhi where you can go and do like a one hour breathing pure oxygen 100% oxygen yeah. by paying Three thousand, four thousand. I don't know how much per per hour. Yeah, you have these boutiques also, by the way. Yeah, these boutiques exactly. So like, it's it's just being done on a much fancier scale and is available to lesser number of people. But how late before it's fully commercialized and like before everybody does something like that? So it's it's not, and you know, climatologists and scientists were consulted when Scott Burns was making the show. So like, even the whole world turning into a nocturnal economy in the next twenty five years. is a reality it's inevitable because the temperatures are just rising absolutely and already in countries like dubai you cannot get out in the day and work right so like just add like 10 more degrees to that and bring that to india that's what will happen um so yeah it's scary it's scary summer is um, knocking on the doors uh, delhi is anyways a furnace but before that tell me what is stellar star cast did you like pinch yourself it's <laughs> harrington Ed Norton, you were like this. Oh my god! Oh my god! The list doesn't stop, and then to suddenly see my name in the middle of it, it it's so weird. Uh, I didn't, I didn't even know that these people were going to be part of the show. Uh, I read the episode, and I knew Richie was going to direct it, direct it after I read the episode, and I was so happy that I was getting to work with him because he also doesn't live in India, so it's hard to like reach out to him. He's not on social media, so it's hard to get get to Richie and. Um, you know i just feel i'm very fortunate to have worked on such a big show which richie is directing and now we know each other personally and it, it's such a beautiful process really filming the whole thing going to new york meeting gaz my co-actor who's played neil who's the captain of the great britain uh, paralympic basketball team who's never acted in his life but wow. when he started acting on camera it felt like he was born to do this you know um some yeah and it's just it's crazy how life sort of has its funny ways of making you meet these beautiful people that become just a part of your life do you mean anyone else on the thing interacted with any any fanboy moment happened please tell us all yeah as is i Kerry Russell was uh, was in my episode who's in americans and who was in cocaine bear that recently released hmm. just such a such a regular human being i mean i just got to spend a, a day with her like you know a day or two uh but we spoke about the most regular things she spoke about her kids about what food she was making and about how my journey to america was an adventure in itself because at the time i didn't even have a tourist visa so like i was called there on an invitation by apple tv plus and how they really went beyond their beyond their way to sort of you know make make sure that i was comfortable in traveling in the middle of the pandemic uh you know like yeah just extraordinary but unfortunately i didn't get get to meet meryl streep or uh forest whitaker or tahar rahim um or david schwimmer or toby maguire and some of these people are people who are responsible for me to make the choice of being an actor you know um wo bhi ho jayega adarsh i hope i hope i do you've reached till here so that's just like another step away so really I, proud of you but 
I mean, also another thing that struck me about you is you really work at a character in a good start here. So when you were uh, Balwan Halwai, you were in a food stall for a year, you actually went to Kanpur and tried to live the life of the farmers that you were portraying. I mean, you know, this is why I do what I'm doing. And if I don't do this, then it's meaningless for me. Uh, like it's not something extra that I'm doing. You know, this, I, I, I'm genuinely interested in people and I feel like I, it's a responsibility for me because somebody who sat with this piece of paper in their hands for months together, Rajiv Joseph, maybe for two years, Richie for one and a half years, Scott Burns for two years has sat and written this and designed the world of it. And then it comes to me and it's such a big responsibility. And that of course meets with the excitement and curiosity. I have to know people, you know, I feel like I, if I don't know where this person comes from or what his family life would have been like, what, he, what he thought about his parents or what his village meant to him or what farming meant to him or what he thinks about religion or God or these small, if I don't understand the politics of the person, then everything else is meaningless for me. Why am I acting even? Huh. So for me, it's, uh, it's a part of what I do and I enjoy, I enjoy this part the most. I probably enjoy this more than even filming because in filming, then everything, everything has parameters. Everything comes with, Oh, this is all that can be said in this much space. But when you are getting to know the person that you are going to be, there is, there are no boundaries. You can go wherever you can ask, whatever you can dress up, like whatever you can speak and live wherever there's it's liberating. There's like unlimited freedom. That's why your performances are also very unpractored, as I would say, because more realistic, you're not humming. You're just not even acting. You're just playing the character that comes across in your performances. Like, yeah, yeah. And I guess that is why I want to be a, a storyteller. And that is why I want to be an actor so that I can do that accurately. So that, because there are so many stories, India is a country of 1.4 billion people. And, you know, even when you like, that's the difference, right? When you live in a small village, like, where Balram comes from, for example, Laxmangad, you know, everybody in the village, but you still don't know their lives personally, but you still know that Gupta ji Shyam ko baje dood leke ghar aate hai. But when you're traveling in Mumbai, when you're traveling in a city and I sit in my car or I sit in a rick and I see like these thousands and thousands of faces all around me, you don't know anybody. Absolutely. And then through this medium, you get a chance to tell a story about one particular human being, about one particular experience. And how beautiful is that opportunity to speak about one individual who you know nothing about and then that can potentially change the way you look at life. Absolutely. And now for somebody who's done international productions, who's done Indian productions, which is the one thing that strikes you and one thing that you think we could learn? Uh, in terms of what I've seen or in terms of what I've been part of? In terms of what you've seen, an observation of an actor who's, you know... Oh, like in, in terms, like I, I saw all that breathes uh, last week. No, I mean in terms of the way they work, the industries work. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it. I I just feel like uh, in India there are because there are so many more people, and because there are so many more people who are in need of employment, our film crews are much bigger. Ah. But when you go to the West, A, their population is lesser and B, a lot of their tech is a little more advanced. So processes are more automated. So the essential difference that you will see, suddenly you will realize that the crew around you is very less. Even though it's a very big production that where millions of dollars are being spent on every episode, the work are very less. So that is the first thing that will hit like strike. But apart from that, I think the core and the crux of filmmaking remains the same as long as the people who are doing it are passionate about it and as long as it comes from a personal space. Absolutely. You forgot one thing, social media and the promotions and the marketing in India. Yeah. Everything else. But I don't know, isn't it, isn't it done like that in the West too? Because this is the first show that I'm doing in the Not West. Not too much. Not, Not too much. much. Very streamlined. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe... Also, because maybe I think that uh, in general marketing and the idea of marketing in India has been batao. Yes. Batao. It's in your face. 
so like i feel it's also like a uh, evolution of sorts that will take place where people will probably realize that maybe you don't need to market it that much or maybe you do i don't know cuz i've never been part of a uh, अर्जुन इज मेकिंग हिज फर्स्ट फिल्म इट्स it's always it's always so like rejuvenating to be working with a filmmaker or with any person who's doing this for the first time because it means everything to them and that is how i want to feel with every project of mine i hope that that feeling never becomes stale because that's when you put in everything that you have it's personal you push yourself and you never feel tired even after you've had a long day you feel tired after the whole process is over and then you're like whoa like that took a lot of time but when you're doing it you enjoy it you support each other you trust each other and filming for khogaye was a dream cuz like ananya and said were have been my most favorite co-actors they're very very giving individuals very genuinely good human beings who are sensitive who care about people who are vulnerable and who are honest and who are not afraid to show and feel what they are going through and i'm so fortunate to have worked with both these human beings and i haven't seen the film but i hope that what i felt and what we went through while filming it and the joy that all of us felt when we when we were filming it uh is seen in the story and in our camera drain in our bond as friends in the film absolutely come through when the intent is pure it does and with your performance it always does so many congratulations and i just hope you go towards that thing of meeting meryl streep Toby Maguire, whosoever is on your wish list, buddy, just say it. We'll manifest it. So, who's on your wish list next? Uh, I think Joaquin Phoenix and Darren Aronofsky are two people I want to work with. Here at Universe, and let's manifest it. So, next time maybe I'll be interviewing you for a collaboration with them. Oh, I hope so, Pooja. <laughs> That'd be epic. Okay, take care. All the very best. Many congratulations, and looking forward to it. Thanks, Pooja. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.